Right guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm on Operation Clean Up the Sprayer. So, um, what I'm doing at the minute, I'm just filling some water from our clean water tank there into the sprayer. I've actually washed the inside out already. The uh, reason for putting the water in is to flush out the booms. They've also been flushed once already. So I just want to be triple sure that it is uh, all rinsed out. We've got a bit of time now that we finished silaging and haymaking to do jobs like this. So I'm going to wash it inside and out. And then I'm also going to wash the tractor afterwards. Uh, I got one of the Grassmen Chrome Northwest cleaning kits that I want to try uh, out on the tractor. So there's about a thousand liters of water in there now. I will, um, I'll shut the, shut the water off. Do that one, pull that so that air can get in there. It will suck up every last little bit then. Uh, and then just put that around to stop. Stop the button on there. I'm also on a new camera. I don't know if you can tell the difference or not, but I did buy myself the new GoPro. So there's the Grassman cleaning kit. We'll do the tractor with that once we've done the sprayer. But uh, basically all I'm gonna do now is take that pipe off, back the sprayer in this bay here, and put it running so that the booms flush out. Anything that comes out goes into the tank. That way it's stored and there's so much water that goes in there, it will get so far diluted, it won't be able to do any harm to anything if it gets spread. So that's the next job. Always got to be a little bit careful there. The booms on the little shed where the pressure washer lives, but we're all good. All right, now hopefully on the screen somewhere, there's the sprayer, that's good. Um, now what do I need to do here? That's in manual, so that's good. I need to go settings, um, simulation speed, set that up, so that's good. Go to nozzle settings, calculator, desired pressure. I put on, set that to 250. That's all good, so yeah. Save that. So now I'm hoping when I fire the machine up, which we'll do now. I need to change the settings on the side of the machine first. Right, change the machine, so fire this up. PTO on. Get some revs. Should be spraying. Which we are. Now this helps for a couple of reasons. One, it flushes the uh, machine out, which is the main thing we want to be doing. Uh, and the second thing, as it wets down the whole machine ready to wash it. Everything gets a bit moist. I don't need to do this for very long because there's not actually any chemical in it. I just wanted to flush it all out to be safe. We'll let that run for 30 seconds or so and then what I'll do in a minute is down on the side there we'll go and change some settings so that we pull water from the clean water tank which is that green one there um, all the way through all the lines into the big tank which will wash out filters and hopefully everything else as well um, and then we'll do this one more time and then we'll dump the rest of the water in the tank so what I'm going to do now is pull the water from here so that's the clean water tank on the machine if I open up this in here and turn this valve on I'm pulling clean water into the hopper and taking it to the tank that will flush all of that out well, which is not a bad thing. I won't get too near the power shaft, but just in there. You can't really see it. There's a side path for clean water. I believe we've used all of them now. So we'll turn that off. We'll let that suck that through. Right, we've circulated all the water. So it's been around everything. Everything should be clean back in here, put it all back through the booms one more time, 
It's always good to do this as well because you see if you've got any leaks. So I've got one drip control valve right on the back of the sprayer on the middle nozzle that's um, not working. So I need to take that apart and put it back together. Probably it's got a bit of gravel in it or something. What we'll do is uh, close it off, shuts all the boom sections off, drop the revs, kill the power, and uh, yeah, that's uh, all we need the tractor running for now. So now I'm going to go out and give that a bloody good wash and uh, catch up in a bit. So that's the sprayer all cleaned up, I'm giving it a good wash, a oh, once over wash on the sides and everything, in under the wheel arches, anywhere that really attracts mud. Um, I reset the plug so there's a handle on the top of the sprayer that you can pull to release a plug in the body to uh, drain the tank so I've reset that one. What I'll do now is I'll take it up to the workshop and I'll fold it out and I'll just put a bit of grease in every grease nipple um, just in case any water's got in there. I like to do that on every machine. Um, and then we'll drop this off and we'll come and wash the tractor. Sounds like I've got to go and mow a little field of grass this afternoon to uh, clear up a cow paddock. So that'll be the, this afternoon's job. Clubs. They don't need a lot because they're only little bearings, a lot of them. An oat plant stuck in there, look. Yeah, they're oats. That one. Right, back this thing in. Lives in the end bay of the shed here. In the winter, it lives in the grain store if the grain store is empty. But uh, I've not winterized it yet because we'll have some sprains in before then. Turn the tractor off because I don't need it on. It's obviously much safer having it off. Gloves. It's always best to turn it off for obviously safety with the power shaft and also um, isobus plugs. They don't like being unplugged. Well, it doesn't hurt them to unplug them when turned on, but it can send the computer into a wobble. We've got like a pull cord I mentioned earlier to empty him and this is just like a fail safe you screw in so nothing can come out but he is right under the middle he goes in there just put a square nut on it which my spanner doesn't want to fit over that's that done up Right, I can pull forward, take the hitch off, then we'll go tractor washing. So here I have Grassmen Chrome Northwest cleaning kit. So I've not actually opened this yet, so we'll have, a, have an opening of it. Good, we have packaging. Lots of squirty things. Ultimate vehicle wash and wax. Window and glass cleaner, that'd be very good because Gus makes them horrible. Wheel bright. So that's good for like brake dust and stuff on your alloys. Simply spray onto the surface and buff off with a microfiber. That's almost like a little polish thing. Tire shine, making your tires nice and shiny. Right, and then I've got a paintbrush, I think that's for the tire shine stuff. A couple cloths. An air freshener, that'll be going inside. And a sponge. So I'll pack it all back in here in a minute. What I'll do first is give it a once over with the pressure washer. And then we'll set to with some of these products. How do I get at the bits I want to do? Now, I have never washed the tractor like this. It's only ever been done with the power washer, so be interesting to see if this makes it any better. The badge 
lights nice and clean. well happy with that that is so clean and it is shining an absolute beaut that tractor has never been that clean the whole time i've been watching it i've got some water marks on the windows but i've got some glass cleaner that i can sort that out with so i'm gonna go put some fuel in there and then i'm gonna have my dinner and then after dinner hang the mower on the back go and cut some grass gosh she looks good there you are, Chrome Northwest. If anyone wants any? I do get quite a few comments, either on videos or on Instagram, that I always seem to be washing my tractor. The way I look at it is, if you work for a company, or a farm, or a contract, or anything like that, where you have a tractor that only you drive, the best thing you can do is look after it, really, because one, you're in it all the time, you want it to be clean, Two, if you wash it little and often, it stays cleaner rather than having to do a big wash every so often. And like three, the people you work for will see how you look after it. And then, you know, it's always best to uh, look after your machine as if it was your own, I would say. Right, so a very slight change of plan. I have hooked the mower on. That's all ready to go. It's got to fill up with some diesel before leaving the yard. But we, I just went in some cows in. We got a load of um, cattle going from the brown shed over Rowden tomorrow morning to the abattoir. Um, and there's two cows in this coal group that um, no longer have their calves with them. So we're going to take those two cows as well because we ain't got no time for passengers. They're not with the bulls, so they're not going to be in calf. Um, they're fairly fleshy, so might as well get rid of them. So Phil's just gone ahead. We're going to try and separate the two cows we want and just run the two in. How easy that'll be, I don't know, but that's the plan anyway. That's like clockwork, that is, Phil. <laughs> Got him. That's pretty good, isn't it? Ah. Ah. You might even have a chance to just turn Mozart off. Alter the, <laughs> alter the, that has put me in a serene mood for cattle separating. <laughs> Truck's making a funny noise. Truck's making a funny noise. I know. Get the accommodation. Right, stop working. Fueling. Right, I don't know how much you saw of the last clip because the uh GoPro stalled on me. I thought we were past that stage GoPro, but there you are. Nothing else for it now but to uh, head to the field. This tractor is so, so shiny. Whilst I was filling up with fuel, I went round parts of the windows with the um, glass cleaner. And it is absolutely phenomenal. I'm well glad I bought it, because I bought the stuff at the Royal Cornwall Show and then I thought, oh, am I actually ever going to use it? The answer is yes. The answer is, it looks awesome. So it's only a little small triangle part of the field we need to cut. Um, it's actually on what we call the techno graze. So they've got three different blocks of ground um, with cell grazing and continuous stocking side by side. So we have, um, I think it's 10 animals in each set stock area and nine on a cell. If it's not that, it's the other way around. Uh, and then we got that three times, so uh, whatever 19 times three is, 57. And then within the field as well, there is what we call spare areas for scenarios whereby there's not enough grass growth on the continuous or set stocking, uh, cell grazing or continuous stocking ground 
to keep the animals growing so you can take animals off of the either cell grazing or continuous stocking and put in the spare areas for them to graze. Um, problem is the spare areas have grown really well because we haven't had to use them because we've had such good grass growth and the cattle have all been fine where they were so um, we're just going to cut one one piece of the spare area it's sort of split into two big chunks and then a load of laneways as well right we need a thousand speed on the shaft run it up float see what happens the only problem with these fields is there's a few stones um, there's another reason for not bringing the front mower having just changed the blades on it that would upset me greatly so we're not going to turn it at all just be Road up, bail tomorrow. Right, we've just finished. Uh, give you a little look at the grass here. It's all pretty stemmy, bit of leaf on it, but a lot of it's all gone to seed, look like that. Um, it's not going to make any rocket fuel fodder for any uh, growing cattle, but it'll keep the bulls over the winter. Um, yeah, probably better to cut it off. They, it's better it being cut off than the cows trying to graze it. Like, you see in next door here, Really that could do with topping, but if you top it, probably gonna knock all those dock seeds out. Um, unless we top it and then spray it, I don't know, we need to do something in there. Cows are coming over to say hello, look. Little calves. Anyway, I need to fold up the side of this mower. Now I know I hit a few stones, which is a bit upsetting pull all these bits out, look, they're getting under the uh, knives in there. Keep it nice and clean. So, uh, those those blades can be flipped. Can they be flipped or do they need changing? They actually need changing, those ones. Whether I'll get away with doing second cut with them or not. Don't know. But, uh, yeah, I definitely hit a few stones. That is a downside to cutting cow paddocks. But, yeah, there'll be a few bales of stuff here anyway, so... Here's the shiny girl. Sucking in some rubbish. Here's Gus. How are you doing, Gus? Have fun. Oh. Snapchat out whilst I was mowing and the amount of people that have texted me saying where's your other mower? It takes longer to get to this field with two mowers than it does to get here with one and mow it. But anyway that's done, we can let that back one down a bit. We'll exit the field here. Plan is now I'll go back and take the mower off um, now I need to put the rake back on for tomorrow, but I might not do that tonight. I might give the windows a good clean up with that um, product, what's it called? Window and glass cleaner. So that's the one it is, blue one, very nice, smells amazing. If you have a Vicon mower, like we do here, there's one very important thing you need to do before you decide to unhook it. And that is to remove this chain off this spring. You think that makes no difference whatsoever, but you unhook that with that chain on, it'll go absolutely fine. You come to hook the machine up again with that chain on, and you will not get it on there for the life of you. It, um, it tensions the headstock to the mower, so every time you try and lift, it just pivots. So by unhooking it, the headstock will come off completely level, and it is a lot, lot better. So I'm going to fold this down a minute and uh, unhook it here next to the front one against the wall.
top link goes saggy. That's the time to take that out. And there we have it guys, that is all the jobs done for today. I can't get over how shiny this is. I know I've said it about eight times, but it's so shiny. Definitely be uh, using those products again. I'm just gonna clean all the windows on the tractor whilst I've got 10 minutes here. Um, but you guys don't wanna see that. So thank you very much for watching today's video. If you've liked it, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel. It is completely free and you will be notified of all my videos um, when they go up on YouTube. And uh, yeah, if you want to see what goes on here um, on more of a daily basis, then you can follow the links in the description to my Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. You can see my phone's going mental now with Snapchat in my pocket. Um, the links are all down in the description for those. There's also a link for any merch if you want a hat or a shirt or a hoodie. Then uh, that's down there as well. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next video. Cheerio.